Welcome back, everybody. This is uh, George Gilbert, San Jose, San Jose Convention Center, the At Scale Conference, sponsored by Facebook, and we're with Jonathan McKay. Jonathan works in the um, uh, in the team uh, improving the web experience for apps. And uh, Jonathan, tell us some of the most recent work that you guys have done, and then let's talk more broadly about how web experience is uh, moving relative to app native app experience. Yeah, so two things that we've done um, recently that have been really impactful for Facebook. Um, the one that we're going to talk about today is push notifications um, in the Chrome browser. And so this is something that traditionally you only get uh, if you build a native app, but now we've brought it to the web. Um, and it's something that we have quite a few people uh, using every day. Another example of a native feature that we've worked on is we actually worked with uh, Opera to get Contact Importer as a feature that a website can use um, by working with the browser and then allowing new users to basically find friends easier even though we're on a website. So, okay, backing up a sec, yeah. we had b sort of before the, the smartphone revolution really took off, yeah. more and more um, of a richer experience was moving into the browser. Yep. And then we switched directions. Yep. Um, why are we moving to uh, enhance the web experience, and, and how is it coming up relative to the native mobile experience? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting that you bring this up because it's been sort of this pendulum where we had the swing towards the mobile web and then it swung back towards native apps. And now, like, I think we're still in the swing where um, native apps are the focus for most people. But actually, sort of in this time, the mobile web has been you know, working in the background and catching up a lot. Uh, and so what we're seeing is that the mobile web has access to all of these features on smartphones that traditionally were just the purview of native apps. Um, so getting access to OS level permissions like push notifications, like contact importer, um, maps is something that traditionally websites could use. And sort of all these things that initially you could only get by being a native app, now uh, web developers and browsers specifically are sort of bringing these and surfacing them uh, to web developers so that they can take advantage of them. Okay, so let's let's talk about surfacing them. Yeah. Is it the uh, is it Apple and its libraries and and Google and the Android libraries surfacing these capabilities not just through the you know native APIs but something that the uh, that uh, I should say the application I guess toolkits but something that the browsers can get at. How is that process happening? Yeah, so the way it works is you have the base layer, which is the operating system. And these permissions all exist within the operating system. Above that, you have the browser. Now, traditionally, um, you had to have your own native app, like a browser, to get these permissions. But what's happening is browsers like uh, Google Chrome and Opera, they're pulling these permissions from the operating system and then building an API to surface it up to web developers. And so they're individually plucking out the permissions and the APIs at the OS level that they think are going to be most important for web developers, and then um, building in that integration with the operating system and surfacing it to web developers in instances where they think it's going to be useful. Oh, so, okay, so for corporate developers who are evaluating, do I do native apps or yeah. web experience, where should they make that trade-off? What's the sweet spot of one versus the other? Yeah, so a lot of this depends on sort of what you want your native app to do. Um, and I think traditionally the idea was if you wanted to iterate fast and you wanted to build something simple, then it would make more sense to build um, a web-based app. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to have like deep integrations, you wanted to use push notifications or you wanted to use like location APIs or contact importer, then you had, you had no choice. You had to build a native app. So now what we're seeing is that this bifurcation is actually starting to blur a little bit. Like if you're a push-based app, um, now you can actually build a robust application on Chrome and still get access to push notifications. And it's just as useful as a native app. So it still depends, like you have to pick and choose and sort of determine what are the key features of a smartphone that you want to be using. Um, but there's more and more of these features that are becoming available via web that were not available before. Okay, so both are ri rising tides. Mm -hmm. um, like, are we gonna see convergence at some point in the future? Or is Apple fragmenting things, you know, with its WebKit sort of dragging its feet now, and Chrome um, sort of on its own track? And what's what's um, what's going on with the capability, the richness of the browser itself? 
Yeah, so I think the web standards community has um, put a lot of effort into trying to bring these open APIs. So for example, um, Google Chrome, Mozilla, and Opera have all been working together on the push API. And there's other APIs that are um, on the way. And this is something that is being developed in an open way. And the hope is that everyone will sort of um, get on board with these as they gain momentum and get used by more and more developers. So for um, a corporate developer yeah. and corporate IT who's yeah. trying to evaluate, you know, they still have a lot of web apps yep. and they want to sort of move the experiences to mobile. Yep. Um, um, how should they prioritize what they move in terms of the feature set the, uh, of the existing apps? Mm -hmm. And um, are we going to reach a point, you know, where most of the development, sort of the the, the center of gravity swings back to, um, you know, sort of web web experiences? I mean, I think on the Android ecosystem, um, it would be overly optimistic to say that the center of gravity has swung back to web ecosystems. But I think what's really cool is that um, you know the web, and especially the mobile web, is keeping up with native apps and is taking the best things that exist on native apps that might not have ever existed on the desktop and making them available. So if you're an IT person and you're thinking like, well, I have a bunch of people on desktop and I want to move over to mobile, um, what should I do? One thing that is an option now that wasn't available before is you can say, well, I want to develop something for Chrome on desktop. And then it's just really easy to port those features over to Chrome on Android. And all of a sudden, you have a mobile experience um, by doing almost no additional effort. OK. Um, yeah. And how about moving that to iOS? So iOS is a little bit different. Um, right now, the Chromium engine, which is what runs Chrome and uh, Opera, isn't available on iOS. Um, so that means that um, with Apple's current implementation, um, it would have to be WebKit that implements these features. And to date, WebKit hasn't implemented them. Okay, so it, there they, they seem to want to keep the experience in native, uh, in the native mobile apps. Is, is that, uh, I mean, can we conclude anything else? Why, you know, why uh, WebKit's not evolving to help, help with that? Well, I think right now it's still early days in a lot of these features. So Google has only had this rolled out for a few months now. Um, and I think everyone's hoping that uh, Apple will sort of um, see the value of this and then roll it out um, to WebKit as well. I think right now they're not saying that they don't want people to be using the mobile web. I think they're taking a more wait and see approach to see how successful this is for um, Google, to see how successful it is for web developers like us, um, and to see if it really gains traction. So. Okay. They're, they're in a wait and see mode, and hopefully eventually they'll adopt it as well. Okay. All right, this is George Gilbert. Thanks for watching. We'll be back.